trap jaw ants are ants that use their jaws for capturing prey, for fighting other ants, launching themselves in the air, literally jumping with their jaws. Jumping with jaws is not a normal thing in biology. That is for sure. I can't think of anything else that jumps with their jaws. The ants have to store up energy in their head or some other elastic structure and then release this energy when they release the latch and the jaws slam closed. Trap jaw ants produce the highest acceleration ever recorded in an animal of that size. Trap jaw ants are accelerating their jaws an order of magnitude more than a bullet in a gun. I work right at the interface of physics and evolution in a field called biomechanics. A large focus of my lab's research right now is on systems that use power amplification, which means that they're performing the motions with springs and using latches to generate very powerful movement. We've filmed trap jaw ants at over 100,000 frames per second. In regular daily time, the ant is on the ground and then you can't find it. But when you put a high-speed video on it, what came out was this ant slowly positioning its head against the ground. The next thing you know, there's an ant slowly spinning through the air in the most improbable parabola of motion. At one level, I can tell you how they're able to do it. On another level, I can say, we don't really understand yet. Zeynep Temo is a mechanical engineer. She works on engineering fabrication and principles and pushing the limits, often with an eye towards biology. We have been working together for a little bit more than two years. The ultimate goal is to understand the behavior of the trap jaw ants better. But as an engineer, what I'm interested in is if I can use this motion in potential applications. Micro robots um, come across a lot of obstacles during their motion. So jumping is a very good way to overcome the obstacles, especially when they are stuck. At the moment, we have a prototype inspired by the trap jaw ant. When I first started designing the synthetic ant head, I used both CT scans and uh, video images from Patek Lab. In order to manufacture robots that small, we cannot use screws, we cannot use nuts, bolts. They are all out of question because they are all very big for the scale of our robots. In order to solve that problem, we use origami-inspired folding techniques to manufacture our robots. You have to be patient and you have to have steel hands in order to assemble it. In my mechanism, I have two mandibles that sit on the latch. When I start applying heat, the mandibles start rotate and applying a force on the latch. And latch can only hold mandibles up to a certain point. That, yes. that little thing right there is a latch. Yeah, there. That is crazy. <laughs> it is very tiny. It's a little bit difficult to put it in. When Zeynep came in and was looking at the trap latch. jaw ant morphology, yeah. she pointed out things that didn't make sense to her that we hadn't even thought about as biologists. Zeynep worked a really long time to build a physical model that matched what the literature says about how the latch works in ants. And she couldn't do it. It just didn't work right. So she went and used a different latch in her model. We're realizing that maybe we've actually misunderstood it all this time. And in fact, the latch and trap jaw ants probably works a lot more like the one that she realized would work in this case. One of our basic questions is, is this an efficient way to jump? We're working very hard on trying to figure out how elastic energy is stored in the head and released. Zeynep's model provides a phenomenal way of looking at that energy delivery to the system. 
We were so focused on the Jaws closing and filming that extraordinary movement that we never thought to look at the head. We started to realize there had to be a spring somewhere. We just had kind of had to shift where we were filming and slow down the frame rate. All of a sudden, this crazy motion showed up. The entire sides of the head of the ant squash in. We basically blow on the ant or do something to stimulate it to load its jaws, and then you'll see the head just start to flex. Oh, they do. Yeah. <laughs> the sides bowing in, the whole head like getting shorter as it's flexing, and then we can measure that motion and measure the shape changes and start to learn about three-dimensional springs. We don't normally think of a three-dimensional geometry being used to store elastic that. energy. Right yeah, you can really see how she compressed the sides of her head in, so they're all squeezed in, what? and also the top of her head is... The chapter ants are giving us insights into a more diverse set of design principles for storing elastic energy. Need to see that. What I feel is unique about this collaboration is okay, so the, how close we work close together. Down. It's a very rich and tight connection between biology and engineering. Performance of these models. There are things that we cannot do with real animals. We cannot actually cut the mandibles of the trap jaw and so that they have shorter mandibles and see what happens. But we can do this with our robots. And we can learn why trap jaw ants have the mandibles at that size or at that shape, or how much energy we need in order to perform a specific jump height, for example. So these are the things that we can learn by studying our bio-inspired mechanisms. There is a broader piece of this, which is the joy and value of knowledge. This kind of work is literally about technology, yes, but it's also about the joy of being a biological system ourselves, of understanding the planet we live on. There, there is such value in just that.